Thor News presents Comet C-2012 S-1 Ison and WTF NASA. Seriously, bro. Part 10. Maybe it'll be a dud. Well, don't need fancy editing for this one. Part 10 is for all the Debbie Downers and haters out there. That's all the facts you need. The Comet of the Century. Mega hype by NASA, astronomers, and scientists. Then, they pop the balloon. And now, maybe a dud. Yeah, this video is going to be pretty simple, probably pretty short. It's self-explanatory. We just want to cover all the bases and the angles on this. And since it seems like we're at a midway point now, we might as well get this one out of the way. Yeah, it could be a dud. Could totally suck. Could be a major disappointment. I know that now, we're at the beginning. The media was all like, hey, Comet of the Century. Now they're like, you remember Cahoots? Hoax tech? That thing was sucky. It was so bad, it ran astronomers out of town. And that after it was a dud, they tarred and feathered them, made them wear pink underwear with giraffes on it, and then marched them through the middle of town and threw tomatoes at it. So, you know, everybody, like, pretty sure that, like, this comet sucks. People are gonna come on here and be like, yeah, dude, your comet sucked. Like, you, you suck. Your comet sucked. Like, they were with Elenin. And to me, the cool thing about Elenin was that Sun blew Elenin to pieces. Like it shot a coronal mass ejection straight at Elenin, hit it, and then exploded it. At least that's how I understand it happened. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, this thing could turn into a turd and a total disappointment. People will be mad at me. I'm sorry, I just like to get excited when they were like, hey, it's the calm of the century. I was like, yeah, yeah it's going to be so awesome. I'm going to have a, a, a really cool girlfriend. We're going to lay in the field with the horses and the dogs. Watch this amazing, beautiful dragon, peace and harmony, go across the sky night after night. It'll be so awesome. And we'll have kick-ass astronomy club donishers parties. Um, You know, thought it would be something people could rally around, but. Now here at the midway point, yeah, it might be a dud. They've even got articles now saying, hey, it could be a dud, dude. Well, duh, could be a dud. So forgive me, in this video, you won't get any fancy editing. I'm just going to show um, the hourly orbital of ice and cover my bases just by saying, hey, yeah, it could be a dud, dude. <laughs> it could be a total dud. Um, but I know that. I mean, I, I hope you understand that. I know that. I'm not like a guy out there saying like, oh my God, there is a brown dwarf in my cereal and soon it's going to mess up the orbit and everybody's going to die. Three months. That's not me. I'm saying maybe Comet Ison will be amazing and I pray and hope that it is, you know, like, which only gives more reason like, man, if this comet's going to crap out, if this comet's going to crap out now, NASA, seriously, why not? Give us more photographs of it. Like when it says here that it is not brightened at all for a while. That either means A, yeah, this thing's going to be a dud, or B, way back in my other videos, this thing might be totally covered in dense outer OR cloud space sludge. And so that when it brightens, yeah, it'll super brighten. Who knows what's going to happen? They say comets are like cats. They have tails, and, and you can't tell them what to do. You can't call them by name. I forget what it is. Yeah, it's, it could be a dud. That's it. Ice and, <laughs> well, ice and ten. could be a dud. Really simple. Please forgive me and... I feel bad. I feel like if anybody ever Googles it and then they like see Thor news and it's just like the dud episode, they're gonna be like, that guy makes duddy videos. No, most of mine are pretty fun and flashy, but this one I, I just felt it needed to be done. Covering the bases, Ison could be a dud. Seriously, NASA, Ison could be totally like the Amy Mainzer Twitter tweet campaign. Total disappointment. Yay. Yeah, so this article says that it's flatlined. It's brightening has flatlined since January 2nd. It's never been exposed to sunlight before. So it says that it may possess a thin frosting of volatile material that vaporizes at a great distance from the sun. It initially gives a false impression that it is dynamically large and active. After the frosting evaporates, the comet stops brightening. Oh my god, I love frosting. No, seriously. I can eat like a can of frosting like it was um soup. You know, like, I like Lemon Supreme or Buttercream. Oh my god, that is so good. So basically, this thing I think could brighten again when it gets to a closer range, which somewhere between July 8th and August. So it could be the celestial showpiece of the year, or could be the new greatest dud of the century. Anyway, yeah, this is our down key, no fun episode. Hope you enjoyed it. We got it out of the way, though. Covered all our bases. Thank you. All right, so here's the plan, dude. I'm gonna go backwards to 9B, go back to Nostradamus. That one's gonna be called Doom Junkie. So it'll be interesting. And then we'll probably go forwards and do one called Just the Facts, man. Because sometimes people are like, you don't ever use any facts, which is a dang lie. I believe in 10 episodes, I've used every single fact I could find. Anyway, so God bless. And if you stayed this long, I'm astonished. Thanks, you guys are awesome. 
and hopefully NASA will give us something, or we'll get some really good info on this thingy. Um, I've still got faith, but, you know. Alright, later. Peace out.